Welcome back at last! So, life got pretty crazy during the fall, but we were still picking stuff up. Like, we didn't really have any time to shoot, but we set things aside in some regular piles so that we could keep everything kind of organized when we did finally have time to film again. And here we are in the new year, and I got some time at long last. So, plus, we, we really need to get some of the stuff off my table. <laughs> so, the first round of pickups we're going to do are things from November. So there were there were a handful of sales here and there around the end of October, beginning of November, and sort of all throughout. So I think we're going to start with some of the better stuff. So now most of these most of these are new. Uh, so Shout Factory, a lot of their titles started going out of print. And so, in a bit of a panic, I was like, okay, buy everything you think you may want while it's still under $20. And so that's what a good amount of these are. So there are a few things here that are a little off-dated, but, yeah, this is roughly all stuff I either pre- this is stuff I ordered or pre-ordered or whatever in November. So, now without further ado, so our first pick up was Pumpkinhead 2, Blood Wings, which a lot of people don't like as a, as a Pumpkinhead sequel, but I enjoy it. I mean, it's, it's not as brilliant a monster movie as the first one, but, you know, it's passable and it's fun. So plus, this, at least from what I was told, was going out of print, so it was like, ah, get it now! So, and we got it fairly cheap, too. Uh, next up, something that I really wanted to see again, uh, Scarecrows. Which, thanks to a tip from one of my Twitter friends, I was able to get for, I think, about $10 from some Hamilton, I think it was Hamilton Books. Like, they had a bunch of, like, really expensive Shout Factory out-of-print titles, just bottom-of-the-barrel cheap. So, uh, I did get to sit down and watch it, and it's still amazing. Uh... And now, last I looked on eBay, this particular Blu-ray is, I think, like, 40-some dollars. I even saw one at 70, but I was like, no. So, pretty happy we got that handled. Honestly, we probably should have done it a lot sooner, but, hey, you know, we, we paid a pretty good price for it. So, followed by Empire of the Ants and Jaws of Satan, Shot Factory's 2-pack. So, this was a pretty good 2-pack. There weren't a whole, there wasn't really anything for Jaws of Satan, which disappoints me because that's, that's the, you know, reptile monster movies are my thing. So that was really the only reason I cared about this release. Uh, turns out Empire of the Ants, actually pretty good. Like, the effects are kind of hokey, but they work. So I'm happy I picked this up. This was also 10 bucks from Hamilton Books. And then I think we have our first thing from Amazon here. Uh... Well, Spencer on Hamilton Books, so I got this from Hamilton Books as well for five. It's the Blu-ray of the Town of the Dreaded Sundown reboot slash sequel. Requel? Is that the term? I'm not sure. But uh, anyway, it's a pretty amazing slasher. It's bare bones, which is the reason I hadn't picked it up before, but it was five dollars. So this movie is definitely well worth five dollars, because even though you don't get a, you don't get any extras on this, well... Okay, for a moment I thought maybe you got a trailer. I, I think we get a trailer, and it's just not listed. I, I can't quite recall. But the movie itself is so solid, like, I cannot recommend it anymore. And it even makes, like, a great double bill with the original time the Dreaded Sundown was over there on my shelf. Like, I, I cannot praise it enough. Like, it is so good. And then, moving on to... So, we pre-ordered this... In November, so this is Shot Factory's Blu-ray for Prophecy, uh, the monster movie, you know, the good Prophecy, in my opinion. And it's basically this eco horror thing uh, about the scariest mutated bear you'll ever see. So I intend to have a full separate video for this title at some point, just because it's it's so good. Like, it's one of my favorite monster movies of all time, and I kind of lost my mind when Shout Factory announced it. So, let's see if I remember what was on here. Uh, they didn't have a commentary, but they did have a good number of interviews that added up to, I think, about 
an hour or two worth of extra content. So, uh, pretty pretty good, pretty tight little release. Uh, so apparently the director, uh, well, assuming he's still alive, which I don't think he is, uh, I kind of understand why there wasn't a director's commentary, if so. Because there were, there were some interesting stories on this, but we'll get into that if we ever get to make our single review video of this. So, but it's great, like, see it. And, you know, I've seen this movie like a dozen times, and the monster still scares me every time. I think it's the only movie that's ever had that effect on me. Because it's just like this melted bear thing, and it's like, ugh. Every time it's on the screen, it's like, ugh. Ugh. And then going with uh, an Amazon pickup. So Howling 2, which was also going out of print. And even though I'm not necessarily a big fan of Howling 2, like, it drove me nuts having that gap on the shelf between Howling 1 and 3. And, you know, it's got Christopher Lee. There's a lot more fun in this than I remember, so especially the music. Like, the music kicks butt, and the extras, which are, you know, it's got pretty good extras. So it's got two commentaries. One is, like, a straight commentary with the director. Uh... A lot of a lot of what he says about Howling 2, he kind of repeated on Howling 3, on its commentary. So there wasn't necessarily a whole lot of new info I got off this, but it was still interesting. And the other commentary is basically just like a couple of interviews that play over the movie uh, with the composer and I think what was that other guy, the producer? No, the editor. Okay, there's an interview of Sybil Danning. There were some talks with the special effects guys, which there's a whole story on this about how they they were supposed to get werewolf costumes, and they were sent Planet of the Apes costumes. And from the interviews with the effects guys, I'm not exactly sure that was really the story, but I kind of watched it in a hurry when I was trying to get some life stuff handled, so... Mm. But definitely, definitely worth picking up, like, if you can still find it under 20. Which, uh, with it being out of print... Mm. So, there was one title, I waited on picking up Leviathan, and it seems to have already gone, kind of gone crazy. So, I think I was seeing copies on eBay for, like, $40, whereas it was, like... When they announced it was going out of print, I was seeing it, it was on Amazon for 15 and I was like, eh, I'll order that later. Uh, and I waited too long. <laughs> Actually, when I ordered some of these titles from that Hamilton Books place, I had ordered Ghoulies and Ghoulies 2, like, the two-pack, and they canceled that because they just couldn't get any more copies of it, so... Time to start paying attention to what's out of print at Shout Factory. Speaking of out of print at Shout Factory, I drop the box, like an idiot, but it doesn't really matter. So, the Amityville Horror Trilogy that Shout put out a couple years ago, uh, that is now out of print, apparently. Uh, so, I kind of lucked out. I had to get really creative with a lot of these particular titles. And so, I went to some place, I, I went to some eBay seller that I buy stuff from occasionally. They had their own website, too. Uh, I don't want to, like, call them out too badly. But so, this was brand new in the shrink wrap, and I don't know if you can see, well, probably not with a whole lot of definition, but, so it came pretty much just in a bubble mailer, and the box was battered to bejesus. <laughs> and if you can see, like, all the dents and creases and stuff, it's kind of one of those things where, depending on how the light is hitting it, but so this came, this came pretty torn up. Uh, like, there are nicks and gouges in it, so thankfully, like, if I just have it on my shelf, I mean, you can see it got crushed from the side here, but you wouldn't really notice, per se. Well, okay, you probably noticed that, but... Also, the box for the Amityville Horror Trilogy is much thinner and cruddier than I expected. But thankfully, the Blu-rays themselves weren't damaged, so we haven't gotten to sit down and watch it yet, but Amityville 1, pretty good movie. Amityville 2? Never seen it. <laughs> and Amityville 3. This one has pretty much no extras on it. I haven't seen it. I'm I'm not expecting a lot. Let's put it very kindly there. But yeah, so. And at least the seller 
kind of gave me a decent amount, like, refunded on it. It's like, hey, I still want it, and it's really hard to find, but couldn't you have shipped it, like, in a box, or... And they, they gave me enough that I think I got this roughly for 20-some dollars, which was, which was pretty good. So we're going to jump our timeline a little bit here to go through our best buy pickups from the month. So, Scary Stories of Hell in the Dark, the Guillermo del Toro produced movie, finally came out. So I finally got to see it. And it was pretty great. Like, I was really happy with it. Uh, not like a super dark movie, per se. Uh, like, PG-13, it's, it's a kid's horror movie. Like, a kid can watch this and, you know, not die of fright, but it can also keep, like, an adult engaged. So, I mean... It's sort of funny, like, this had some, this had stuff in it that was much scarier than a lot of the other things I'd seen recently. Like, the creature designs in this. So, it was, it was pretty awesome. So, that might get its, like, own thing. Because I did, like, a little bit of a mini scary stories retrospective. Like, I got my hardcover book out and I looked at it. And I read a few more. I read a few of the stories that were featured, like, in, in this. Uh, and then we also got something from Creepy Co., which I'll show off in a separate video. And then, uh, so this came out a lot earlier this year. Well, in 2019. Well, I guess it's technically, technically we're a month into 2020, but this came out in 2019 at some point. <laughs> so this is the Alien 40th Anniversary 4K Steelbook. And I already have the Alien Anthology, so I was kind of like, eh, on it. Um, but it, when it first came out, it sold out pretty fast, and so it was just kind of like a collectible. So, I kind of bought it, first chance I got, like, as a collectible. So, and it was only, like, $14. Uh, which, I mean, yes, affordable, but at the same time, it's like, ah, oh, man, if I ever decide to, like, flip it, mm. But it was good. So, it was a very good, uh, it was a good transfer, it's a good release. Uh, if you somehow don't have Alien, like, well, I can't understand how nobody would have Alien already, but if you don't have Alien somehow, uh, this is this is a good copy to get. So, and then this is technically a December pickup, but since it's a Best Buy Steelbook, I was going to, I decided to include it in this video. So, It Chapter Two Steelbook, uh, which this had a lot of good extra stuff on it, so it's got a commentary. First of all, I liked the movie. I don't care what anybody else had to say about it. Like, some people were, when it first came out, some people were kind of underwhelmed. And I think it's just the way the second half of that, of it in general as a story, is like the second half just isn't as good or interesting when they're adults fighting the creature. Uh, but this one pulled it, this one pulled that off pretty well. So I was, I was impressed because of the, you know, kind of negative things I heard. Uh... But, and the feature acts were pretty nice, too, so it covers material from the first It and the second It, because they all kind of mesh together. Uh, and actually, that's sort of another thing I picked up in relation to that. So I actually picked this up a little bit later, So, but uh, there's an art book, The World of It, which I was reading while I was watching that, and everything is like really like sorted by section. There's this thing I have in the front. So there's like, every character kind of gets a couple pages to themselves. So some pages about Eddie, designs. Um, it's, it's pretty good. So And it was only like 20 bucks on sale too. So kind of an extra companion to get the movie. So unfortunately, this is one of those... So whenever you buy Best Buy Steelbooks, like be careful. Because I could, this was the only Steelbook left in the store. And so when they handed it to me, I could hear kind of, something kind of moving around, and I was like, uh-oh. So I get home, I open up, the 4K disc in here is just, like, loose, rattling around the case. It has a couple of scratches on it, uh, and it actually plays kind of funny, which was quite disappointing. <laughs> so I need to actually go to Best Buy and get the 4K disc itself replaced, because it's just... The disc is the same as it is in the normal edition, it's just the steelbook is, like, gone, so you can't get the steelbook anymore. 
And of course, like a week after I bought it, it went on sale and was $10 cheaper. So thankfully, Best Buy has been pretty cool about fixing that and other associated issues. So now we move into our used pickups for November, which saw half price books is half off sale and just a bunch of other random things. So I think we'll start kind of small and work our way up. So the first used pickup, uh, Clive Barker's Book of Blood. So those are, I think they're kind of like anthology. I have one somewhere here, but I haven't read it yet. I think they're little anthologies of Clive Barker stories. And I had no idea there was a film adaptation of any kind that was called Book of Blood. And I just happened to see it, and it was $5, and I was like, okay, cool, I'll try it out. So, going to be interesting seeing what this is all about. And then moving into some more Shout Factory territory, uh, we have Brain Scan, which we found used for, I think it was like 10-ish, and that seemed like a pretty good deal. And reading the synopsis, it sounded pretty cool. So, gonna be gonna be fun checking that out. No real idea what to expect from it, of course, but <laughs> that's why we don't have all that much to say. So, because I had the stuff like on my back in my to-do pile for so long, like I ended up watching a lot of it. Uh, some stuff, well, actually, most of the stuff we're into now from the pile, um, I haven't quite seen yet, so. And then, uh, Bad Dreams and Visiting Hours, which I think Visiting Hours is a slasher, but I'm not exactly sure. Uh, so, we'll get to check these out. So there's just so much stuff from the whole history of horror that I don't know about, and so this, it feels like this is going to be one of those things, like, where you know, I see it and it's like, wow, that's awesome. How have I never heard of this before? And I'll probably talk about it on Twitter or something. And now we kind of move into our last few things that are going to be in this video. So we were buying, you know, anything. We, You know how we do it here. You know, we pick up anything cool that we can find. And so there were, there were NECA figures. There were vinyl. There were books. There was just nuts. So... After this, we're going to shoot a couple more, uh, but, oh, that's right, get right into it. I'm looking at, so I don't script these, so I just go, and I'm looking at in front of me like a stack of vinyl and a stack of figures. So, but anyway, so uh, the other, another used pickup uh, was this Lizzie Borden movie, uh, it's just called Lizzie. So I think this is on Shutter or Netflix. This is on some streaming service. And when it first came out, I think at 18? Yeah, when, it, when this first came out the year before last, I was like, oh, that sounds pretty cool. But I just never had an opportunity to really like, sit down and watch it. And then this was like $3. And I thought, yes, let's, let's pick it up. And so I did get to see this one. It's pretty good. Like, it doesn't have a whole lot of extras. Just like a couple, just like a featurette about, you know, why we wanted to do this, why we took this take on Lizzie. Uh, and it was pretty good, so I would recommend this movie. Uh, even if the extras are a little thin, so, the extras are a little thin, so maybe I, I don't know if I'd necessarily recommend, like, the Blu-ray release. But the featurette that we did get, I think it was like 15, 20 minutes, so it wasn't like a, you know, throwaway thing. Uh, and there was a lot of good info on that, so, yeah, good movie. Next we have Strangers Pray at Night, which I've been wanting to see ever since I saw The Strangers for the first time, I think it was last year when I got a hold of the, it was, it was either last year or 2018 when I got a hold of the Shout Factory Strangers release. And this turned out to be pretty awesome, so it's, uh, well, basically this family goes out to a trailer park to meet a relative, and the strangers have decided to hole up in the relative's trailer, and it gets pretty nasty from there. So, I was really happy with this, like, yeah. Uh, one thing that's really notable is that it has pretty awesome music, like the main theme sounds a lot like the theme for The Fog, and in an interview with, uh, 
the guy who did the music on this, because this has this has a handful of good extras. So mostly they're like they're very short, like feature at like I think three to five minutes a piece. Uh, they were talking about it's like yeah, we were really inspired by Carpenter music. And, yep, <laughs> yep. But uh, yeah, this was this was pretty good, and I was even though it was a little bit more than I was kind of willing to pay. I think it was like six or something like that. Uh, it was still it's still pretty good, so I'm really happy I saw it and I'm happy to have it. So plus it's still has the And then moving on, so another thing I had picked up, so I subscribed to Thangoria, but I'm a very slow reader of magazines apparently, just because I have so much else going on. And I finally finished reading the article about Puppet Master and Little Strike, I think a month and a half ago. <laughs> And I have never seen a Puppet Master movie before. <laughs> right? Uh, so I figured I'd start with this one, and it was pretty cheap. I think it was like five or so uh, during during whichever sale. It seemed like everybody and their mom was having a sale at the time. So I'm not really sure what all to expect or how good this particular Blu-ray is, but... You know, it should it should be good from everything I've heard. Because Puppet Master is one of those things, it has like, what, 12 entries? And so it's like, ooh, I don't know. Uh, especially since before I really got into horror and started paying attention to people like who write about and create horror, I'd never even heard of Puppet Master, so it was completely out of my, mo out of my consciousness. So we'll see what that's all about. And then our final used pickup from November, so we're not including Black Friday sales, because Black Friday sales were their own separate thing, and also it's a very big stack over there by itself. But so our last normal November pickup was Shark Factory's Species Collector's Edition, which I kind of put off getting for a while. Uh, I personally don't like species very much. So there was a period in, when did the Shop Factory put this out? I think like 2015, 2016, oh, this, we put this out 2017, wow. Uh, there, was, there was a period where the collector editions that Shop Factory was putting out were movies that I wasn't necessarily excited for, and so that's kind of the wave that this is from. So that's why I didn't have it sooner, but I found it at my price point of, I think, $10, $12 for, like, a blind buy of, like, one of these collector editions. So we're going to take another crack at it and see how we feel. So it's actually got two discs, which is how you can tell that they really packed it with extra stuff. I think one of these discs is... I think most of the extras are on, like, the separate discs. So, yeah, there's going to be... We're going to learn a hell of a lot about species. <laughs> so, and, I mean, I remember being... I don't remember it being a bad movie. Like, it was a good movie. It was just kind of not my thing at the time. But then again, I haven't seen it for, damn, probably 15 years or more. <laughs> so, uh, oh, so that was everything we picked up in November before Black Friday really hit us in the face. <laughs> and so we will be more or less right back. Uh, showing that stuff off. So, thanks for hanging out. Uh, like, share, and subscribe. You know, if, if you want to.